Let's have a look at our first division. We've got 216 divided by 3. So the first thing we're going to do is to draw our bus stop. And the 216, the first number, goes inside the bus stop. And 3 is going to go on the outside. And our answer is going to end up on the top of the bus stop. So we're going to take the 3 and we're going to try and divide it into each of these digits in turn. So we'll start with saying, how many times does 3 go into 2? Well, 3 is bigger than 2, so it can't. So instead, we say, well, what about th how many 3s go into 21? So we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. So that's seven times. So I'll write it over the one because that's the last digit we've used. Now we look at the six and say, how many times does three go into six? Three, six, that's twice. So we've got our answer of 72. Now to our second division, 57 divided by four. So we're going to draw a bust up again. Our 57 goes on the inside, and our 4 goes on the outside, waiting at the bus stop. Or, yeah. So, how many times does 4 go into 5? Well, 4 goes into 5 once, because once 4 is 4, but we've still got 1 left over. Because we've used up 4, we've got 1 more to take us up to 5. So the 1 left over we can put in front of the 7. So we've now got 17. So how many times does 4 go into 17? We've got 4, 8, 12, 16. That's four times. And we've got one left over to get from 16 to 17. So we could write our answer as 14, then R for remainder, 1. Or we could write our answer as 14 and if we've got one left over and we're dividing 4 into it we could say we've got 14 and 1 over 4 or 14 and a quarter but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with neither of those answers I wanted an answer as a decimal so I've got my one left over but I've got nowhere to put it so I'm going to put a decimal point here and put a zero at the end Okay, now I've not changed the value of the number. 57 or 57.0 is still the same. But the one I had left over, I can now put in front of the zero. So I can say, how many times does 4 go into 10? Well, first I need to put my decimal point up here. And then I say 4, 8 is twice. And then 9, 10, that's two more left over. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to put an extra zero and put my two here. Now I can say how many times does four go into 20? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. That's five times. Nothing left over, no remainder. So we've got our answer as a decimal, 14.25, which is the same as 14 and a quarter or 14 remainder one. At first, it's not obvious that this is a division question. They're asking us to put these fractions in ascending order, so from smallest to largest. A lot of people would be tempted to keep these as fractions, work out a common denominator, and then sort them out that way, which is fine, that would work. But with the denominators we've got here, you could find that you end up needing quite a large common denominator uh, for them all to fit into. So give it a go, but I'm going to show an alternative, and that is to use division. So if we start with the two fifths, I'm going to do my bus stop. And so I'm going to start my two, put it inside, five on the outside. Now five doesn't go into two. So a bit like we saw before, I'm going to put, well, I'm going to put uh, a zero here. We'll just do one zero for now and see if we need any more. 
So five doesn't go into two, so we can put a zero. And we carry over the two. How many times does five go into 20? Five, 10, 15, 20. That's four times. So we've got 0 0.4 is equal to two fifths. Now we'll do the same sort of thing for a third. So we'll do our bus stop. Put the three on the outside, the one on the inside. I'm going to put a few zeros this time. It doesn't matter how many zeros. If you put too many, you can ignore them. If you don't put enough, you can add more afterwards. So how many times does three go into one? Well, it doesn't. So we put a zero. And then we're going to carry our one across. How many times does three go into ten? Three, six, nine is three times. And one more will take us up to ten. So we carry over the one. So again, how many times does three go into ten? Well, it's going to be three times again. Remainder one. And we do the same again. We're going to get three, remainder one. And this is going to keep going on. So because we're just trying to sort these, I'm going to just stop at three decimal places and see if that's enough. But I know that I'm going to have three, 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 three. Or I can put a dot on the top to show I know that's recurring. Now we want to work out what three eighths is as a decimal. So we do our bus stop. Three goes on the inside. 8 on the outside. Okay, let's do... Well, let's start off with three zeros and see if that's enough. Does 8 go into 3? No, it does not. So we carry the 3 across. How many times does 8 go into 30? Well, 8, 16, 24 is 3 times. And then from 24, we've got 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So that's 6 remainder. And how many times does 8 go into 60? Well, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56. 64 would be too many, so we're going to stop at 56. That was 7 times. And then 57, 58, 59, 60. So remainder 4. And how many times does 8 go into 40? So 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. That's five times. So 3 eighths is the same as 0 0.375. And finally, we've got 1 sixth. So bus stop, 1 on the inside, 6 on the outside. Put a few zeros in. Does 6 go into 1? No. Carry the 1. How many times does 6 go into 10? Well, it goes in once, and then 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 4 left over. How many times does 6 go into 40? 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42 would be too many. So we stop at 6 sixes, which was 36. And then we've got 37, 38, 39, 40, so 4 left over. So it's 40 again, so 6 into 40 is going to be the same, 6. And we're going to get that 6 recurring. Okay. But as I said, for this purpose, we're trying to just sort them. So we're just going to be looking at which are bigger and which are smaller. So we want the smallest to start with. We've got 0 0.4. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. So I'm just looking at the first digit or the first decimal place. The one is the smallest, so that's going to be my smallest one. Then, well, threes are smaller than four, so three, three, or three, seven, or three, three is smaller. And you can look at my decimals video if you want to. Uh, if you, it's not completely clear why this one is smaller than this one. We've got a four in the tenths column, or three in the tenths, so this one will be the next smallest. And finally, this one. So if we want to write them in ascending order, let's go over it. So it was this one first. We've got one sixth. Then we had one third. Then we've got three eighths. And then we've got two-fifths. So you've still got quite a bit of work, but I think with this example, it's less work than if you worked out a common denominator. Give it a try. 
see which way you prefer. Uh, please do like the video, add any comments and subscribe to my channel so then you'll get updated about any new videos I add. Thank you very much.